a woman from the island of Trinidad shares her remarkable visions, supernatural encounters, and healings, all leading back to the one true way in Jesus. That and a lot more on this week's Spirit Answers podcast. Well, Tina, thank you so much for joining us on Spirit Answers podcast today. Hi. Hi, Alex. You're welcome. You have um, so many incredible encounters and testimonies, uh, you know, and, and it really encompasses so many things, miraculous healings, uh, encounters with demons, uh, you know, hearing from God, uh, just, you know, divine wisdom at the exact right moments. Um, so many incredible encounters. And uh, I'm so excited for people to hear those. But before we get to that, I want to take it back to the beginning with you when you started to hear God's voice, even before you became a Christian. So with that being said, uh, if you could please go ahead and get us started with your testimony. Okay. Um, yes. So I was a Catholic for approximately two years and uh, my sister and I would go to Catholic mass uh, well, on a Sunday, right? And uh, one Sunday she didn't attend mass with me, right? Um, so she went out my entire family and uh, when I arrived home I walked into the living room and someone called my name who I believe is God right uh, said Tina so I looked in the direction of the voice and I didn't see anyone and I so I assumed someone called me outside in the street right so I went out into the gallery porch and um and I looked around, no one was in the street. So I went back into, inside into the living room and I just stood still. And the voice, the person, which I believe is God said, go to the bookshelf, take the Bible, go to your room and read it. And I took the Bible, went to my room, I closed my door and I, I dived in my bed, right? And um, I just opened the Bible, right? And when I open the bible it opened to exodus chapter 20 all right so i'll just read it for you right so it said um and god spake all these words saying i am the lord thy god which have brought thee out of the land of egypt out of the house of bondage thou shalt have no other gods before me thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, right? And I read the entire chapter, right? And, wow. Um, I read the entire chapter, and I, I took all the pictures I had. I had pictures of Mary and Joseph. I had rosaries. Um, um, actually, I, I rarely ever prayed with the rosary, but um, I had rosaries, right? So I took the rosaries, pictures. Uh, I had little idols. I dumped it into a garbage bag and um, I placed it outside my room and at the same time my mom came and she saw the garbage bag and she was like what is this and I was like mommy I believe God just spoke to me because um, he came home right after right but anyway um, she said um, what you doing I said um, mommy I believe God just spoke to me and he said um, you should not be worshiping idols, right? And uh, she said, oh my gosh, you'll get sin, you'll get sin. That's what she said, right? You'll get sin. Because she was upset because she was a Catholic, right? And um, so a couple months after that, I don't know if you want to go into that now. Yeah, we can. And I, before we do that, actually, I wanted to okay. just say how remarkable that is, first of all. Uh, what an encounter there with God. And and I wanted to ask you, what, what did his voice sound like? Do you remember? Yes, um, his, vo his voice sounded uh, really uh, gentle, um, kind. I, I cannot see, like, if I cannot remember if he sounded like, um, had a Caribbean accent like mine. I cannot remember that. I knew that he spoke perfect English. Um, but I, ca I can't say, okay, he, he sounded like an Englishman. He sounded like an American. He sounded like, I cannot remember. I, I, you know, but I knew, I knew that he spoke to me in perfect English. Wow. 
Wow. Yes. So just really gentle and, and everything was perfect. Yes. And kind. And I didn't even think to ask him. I didn't think, you know, I just knew it was God. And I didn't think to say, God, is it you? You know, I don't know why I think back about it. And I was like, why did I not even ask? But I just knew it was God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we get that so many times on the show. You, you know, you just know that you know what you're experiencing yeah. is, is of God. Yes. What happened yes. next? So a few months later, my grandmother came to stay with us, right? We didn't have a guest room, so she stayed in my room. And um, so well, she was a Catholic, right? So um, not knowing, my mom took out the pictures that I threw in the garbage, and she kept it. So she placed it in, the, in my room uh, one day when I went to work. So when I came home, I saw these pictures up in my room again. So I was like, mommy, did you put up these pictures? She's like, yes. I was like, no, mommy, I don't want any pictures in my room. I don't want the pictures in my room, you know? And uh, she told me, no, that's for gra- gra- um, granny, right, grandma? And, um, you know, but anyway, um, grandma was sick, right? She was sick with cancer. And um, she uh, couldn't speak at that point right and so I one day Saturday I spoke with her before leaving for work because I worked on weekends at that time and I I told her I, I sat on well her bed was next to my bed so you know I sat on my bed she sat on her bed and I was speaking with her and I tell her you know there's a reason why you know what we should not be worshiping idols and I sat and talked to her whatever and um we prayed together you know and I I swear that she genuinely um, um, agreed, you know, to what I was saying. And um, I told her, I said, you know, Grandma, if you want me to read the Bible for you at any point in time, you could um, wake me up and I would read the Bible for you, right? And she um, she, she nodded her head, right? And um, I, that was the Saturday. The Monday I went out to work and um, I got a call Um mommy for mommy um, telling me that grandma died but the thing is I don't know why well I know why I believe God allowed me to know that she is with him I cannot explain how how can I think that someone is with God no one knows right but I believe that God allowed me to know that she is with him I just felt a peace and everyone was crying and they couldn't understand why I wasn't crying well they probably thought I wanted my room back for myself right but wasn't that I just know and I cannot say how I know that mm. she is with him it's really strange yeah wow wow how beautiful how beautiful uh for God to give you that opportunity um right before she passed yes. and um you know to allowing her the opportunity to repent uh for the idols and then after that that knowing uh, just that you know that inner knowing that she's there with him uh now in paradise yes I'm sure you genuinely repented that day, I believe, yeah. Wow, wow, so so cool. Um, yeah, what what happened next? Um, I used to get a lot of dreams, right? And even today, I, well, I get dreams if I like, I'll ask God questions and even answer me through dreams or through scriptures and stuff, right? So I would um, I remember one night I um went to bed. I had a dream of I had a dream of being dressed in gold and like a gold dress I had a gold dress someone made a gold dress for me right some people right was dressing me in gold and um and I was asking them why are you doing this for me why are you doing this for me right I felt like if I was like a princess or like a royal I don't know I like somebody important right and they were dressed they had me in this dress, but the dress was a little too big for me, right? And um, yeah, so I was asking them, you know, why are you doing this for me? And they wasn't answering me for a while. And then they answered me and said, you're getting married. And I said, okay, I want you to go and get white cloth and take it to the tailor. I want him to make a white dress for me, right? He made the white dress um, for me, they told me. And I asked, I told them, I said, take me to the tailor. I wanted to pay him, right? So they took me to the tailor. I just 
appeared at this place. I don't even know how I got there. But anyway, I was at, at a place standing outside a home, right? And the tailor came out and I said, well, I was kind of like yelling across and I was like, what do I owe you? And he looked at me and then he, he for a little while, and then he looked, um, he looked up and he said, you know, anything you want, you know, you will get it, right? And I got up from the dream, right? Wow. And I had, and, and, and the thing is something happened the next day and things just, I, I prayed about it and I was really stressed out, right? I don't, I don't want to go into it, but I was really stressed out. And then like later in the, in the evening, I said, God, I am leaving this up to you. And things just made a turn around like in seconds. Mm -hmm. In seconds. I just, because you know why? Some, we worry, in, as the scriptures say, right? Worrying, you can't add, you know, a cubit to stature. You know, worrying, mm -hmm. you can't do nothing. And you're mm -hmm. worrying about stuff. It doesn't make any sense. Leave it up to him. Things will work out how it's supposed to work out, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, yeah. sometimes I still worry, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's it's uh, unfortunately something that we we will be dealing with to some extent until we go to the uh, other side. But I love that one too, and um, I, I it just makes me think too. I think that um, sometimes we lose sight of the fact. I think that you know Jesus wants us to come to Him and ask Him uh, yeah. for for things, and it's not. I know you've said this before. It's not necessarily about getting the thing, so to speak but more just on, on building that relationship with him and that reliance on him. Um, and he, and just like how he said in uh, the new Testament, you know, he, he can't have a relationship unless he, he gives to us, you know, just the same that we, we give to him. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I love that. I, I think he wants us to, he wants to bless us. He wants to, he wants to give us the things that, that we want uh, of course, as long as it lines up with, with his will and what a, what a, what a cool reminder of that through this experience. Everyone who says Lord, Lord will enter. You understand what I'm saying? Um, we need to have a relationship with because you don't if he don't know you, how could he let you in? And he won't know you. You understand? Like you come into my home, I don't even know you. How can I let you in? You know, so, so you know, he needs to know us, right? And we need to have that relationship with him. Yeah. So, yeah. Well said. Yeah. Um, so um, you want me to go off? go forward with another dream yeah please okay thank so you i had another dream right this dream <laughs> this dream was um i was in the forest right i was in this forest i just became a christian that was probably a few months after becoming a christian um i was in this forest and um this tall person um dressed in white like a white robe um was holding my hand and he was really tall i couldn't even see his face and um was walking me through and there were monkeys trying to snatch me with their tails and I was afraid right and I was holding on to the person's hand and I, they're, they're leading me like they're trying to comfort, comfort me tell me don't worry you know but they're not seeing it audibly right so I'm walking through the forest and then um, I reached a bridge it's like a you know like a little hump bridge it's a short bridge kind of like a hump over a river I don't know how to explain, but anyway, it's like, it's like a little hump mm -hmm. bridge, right? And yeah. I was walking over with, with him and I slipped on the bridge and I almost fell in the water and he held, he held my hand tight, lift me up and, and, and placed me back in a standing position, right? And I continued walking. I saw my dad's caravan because we have a caravan, right? So I saw dad's caravan, like if he's waiting for me, right? Um, so I'm out of, the, out of the forest now. And um, then I said, Daddy, how do I know it's you? Right? And then a voice from above say, because I am stronger than they are. And I got up. I'm like, what? God, I, you know, God telling me that, hey, he's stronger than, you know, any, anybody, you know? Stronger than the demons, who I believe is demons, right? The monkeys are trying to snatch me because remember, I was basically in the enemy's hands all this time until I come to know Christ, right? So mm, in a yeah. sense, because I wasn't really focused on God until he called me, right? So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, and that makes me think too, just sometimes when we look at our circumstances, it can look so, um, you know, so scary and, and foreboding um, when, we, when we are 
taking our eyes and sight off of God. And, and really all we have to do is just readjust and remember that God is the creator of everything, even the things that are coming against us. And he, yeah, like, just like he told you, he's stronger than everything. He created everything. And it can be really hard to do that. Sometimes it's very easy to lose focus of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, how about what is great? I mean, how about what is awesome? I tell you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's another dream. Then um, I had another dream. I, I actually, I dream a lot, right? I had another dream with, um, well, let me tell you what happened first. I'll tell you, my, my neighbor is a pastor, right? And um, he got ill, right? He had um, kidney problems. And um, his wife called the evening. Um, I believe it was a weekend because, uh, yeah. So when the phone rang, um, everyone came out into the delivery room at the same time, right? And when we was talking on the phone, they was out of like, concern right so I was wondering what was happening then she said um when she hung up when she hung up on the call when she came on the call she said um um you know pastor is sick pastor's wife just called and she he said that she um she said that he's sick and um she asked if we could pray for him right so immediately I turned and I went into my room um I don't usually tell I don't tell people like when I'm doing things like I fast and I don't tell people I don't tell people I'm praying for someone if someone asks me to pray for them I'll just keep it like that you know um and that kind of thing anyway so I went into my room I didn't say anything to anyone and I kneeled down and I started praying for pastor and what I would do usually I would um every day I would declare my day I think you guys know about that right declaring a day yeah um, yeah I would get up in the morning and I would place my hands on my head and I would say I am the head and not the tail, right? For it is written. Mm. Um, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Um, a thousand shall fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh me. Um, uh, I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. That kind of thing, you know? Um, great, um, well, I said that already. Great is he who is in me. Um, like scriptures like that, right? Sure, so yeah. I'll speak scripture over myself, right? And I uh, put on the whole arm of God and like that. But anyway, so I I would do that. But instead of doing that, after the next day, I started doing that for pastor. So I would get up in the morning and I would say, um, he, uh, I declare that he shall live and not die. The weapon formed against him shall prosper. You know, that kind of thing. So scripture, right? And I will yeah. pray for him too, right? And um, so I did this for like um, about three weeks, right? So I did it for about three weeks. Then I got a dream. So I went to sleep that night. I, dream. I dreamt that I was going to sleep again. I was telling everyone good night, you know, and I was going to sleep again. So I, I dreamed into a dream. That was the first and only time that ever happened to me, right? I dreamed into a dream and God tell me, go and tell pastor. I call his name. And he tell me what it was. He was like, I can't even remember now. But I remember then <laughs> for years, right? So and I even tell my mom, I tell I told people, right? And I probably should not have, but I did, right? Um, after. I didn't tell them. I told him first, but I told people after. I was like, oh my gosh, God is so great, you know. But anyway, so um, but, but I forgot today. Um, so he told me what to tell pastor so I got up from that the second dream right into the first dream and I dreamt that I I was walking out to get a taxi from home but I was walking in the other direction which I I don't usually walk and I saw pastor and he um, stopped for me and he picked me you know he said you give me a lift right and I said oh pastor God told me to tell you and I told him what it was and he turned and he cried and he said that is the answer I was waiting for right and I um I got up from that dream I was like what a dream into a dream it's so strange I never had a dream into a dream I just I think taking it as a dream right I wasn't even thinking to walk across to my the pastor and he's just a few houses away probably five six houses away maybe from me and I wasn't even thinking to walk across to him and tell him you know what I dreamt um so anyway I 
probably two weeks later, I had to, I was walking out to get a taxi, and um, pastor um, stopped that, like two hours away from where I live. Right, he stopped, and, but it was the other direction which I usually walk out. Right, so he picked me up, and I said, "Oh, pastor." Um, I dreamt that God told me to tell you, and I told him what it was. And he turned and he cried, and this is reality. And he said, that is the answer I was waiting for. And I was wow. like, Pastor, you know, I dreamed that you picked me up and he told me the same thing, and he cried the same way. And he was like, he didn't, well, he wasn't even taking me on. He was just starting to cry, you know? And I was like, wow. oh my gosh, I dreamed that I dreamed that, you know? And um, yeah, so that was it. And um, I tell you, God is so amazing. And he showed me how it's going to happen to imagine that. You know? Wow. Yeah. What a how what a cool prophetic dream. Yes. I I tell you, God is just so amazing. And yeah. from even from young, as I told you, right? I but I was going to that. I was going to that after. Yeah. You know, God, you know, he, he he shows if you ask him your calling, he will show you your calling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're in so far your your testimonies are. Uh, I think a testament to these types of things still happen today. There, there are many people for whatever reason that um, think that some of these things stopped, you know, back in the days of, uh, you know, the Bible or in acts, but no, these things are certainly still going on, aren't they? Exactly. Yes. Yes, they are. And I believe that there's a lot of people out there and they're just probably not talking yet because this is hap this happened to me for years. And I, you know, I, I didn't want to tell, I mean, I would probably tell like one, a few, you know, like one, um, you know, person, I might tell something. I might, I wouldn't go too deep because I feel like if people would think that I'm mad, because this don't happen on a normal basis, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh yeah. What happened um to when I it's probably the first two years of being a Christian, right? Um, from my my job, first job, um, there was a a Christian gift shop, right? I, I would love to go to this Christian gift shop and I would love to, you know, like talk to Christian people and things, you know. So I would go to the Christian gift shop and talk to the girl there and I would buy books and read, right? But I would pick out, you know, certain books. But I never, you know, picked up on it. I never pay attention to it. I would just pay, it's just so interesting to me. And these books were deliverance books, right? And uh, the girl there said, Tina, you know, you only pick up certain books here. You only pick up deliverance books. You should pray and ask God what your calling is. And I said, you know what? I never thought to do that. So I went home that night and I prayed and I said, God, show me what my calling is. Just like I said, right? And I prayed like normal, you know, in Jesus' name. And I didn't, I believe it was the same night or the next night, I got a dream. I got this dream I used to. I used to get these dreams as a young girl. And I remember I used to be telling my parents, I would tell my parents, I said, I'm getting these dreams. I said, mommy, mommy and daddy, I keep getting these dreams. And I, and I was like, what dreams are you getting? I said, I keep getting dreams that are, are touching people, like are praying for them. And they will be screaming and saying, don't touch me. And screaming like, like, like well, no one was like possession, right? But then I didn't know what it was. And I thought I was screaming and thinking, you know? And I was like, okay, well, I guess that is good. I don't know what I was going to sell them, right? But they didn't know, you know. Um, only when I became a Christian did I realize. When I pray and ask God what, you know, what calling is, I got the same exact dream I used to get as a little girl. And I started getting these dreams from me at the age of probably seven, eight. Um, yeah, all that, that age. Just keep getting these dreams over and over. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. I forgot, I forgot about it only when I prayed about it, I got the same dream. Yeah. Wow, and 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 what is, what is your takeaway on that? Um, I believe that um, I believe God is showing me this is where He want me to be. It's probably to pray for people, probably in line of deliverance or intercession, or I I, I don't I can't say a hundred percent, but I believe it's along that line, you know, um, because I've seen things. I mean, I believe that all of us we have it in us too, you know. But I believe that God probably have a specific mission for everybody, of course, to, you know, and probably he's leading me along that line, you know? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, w- I would agree with you. I think he I think he certainly is is leading you in that direction. And um, and, you know, we'll see. And even through some of the testimonies as we keep going here, I uh, I think you've already been doing, you know, some of this uh, intercessory work and, and, and deliverance work and, and maybe not exactly, you know, when we think about deliverance in the exact, you know, type of way that that we may see, like, for example, when Jesus was casting demons out, but you, you've certainly had your you've had your fair share of encounters with demons and and helping yeah. people through those experiences and i think that god is probably continuing to to guide that path for you and and, and giving you what you need to 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 keep helping in that field of ministry yeah i believe so too i remembered um to this from within the first five years of being a christian um i was in my room and um, laying in my bed i i was going to sleep early right because I had to get up early. So I was going to sleep like all 7.30. Real strange, right? But anyway, I was going to sleep like 7.30. And um, this night, someone called me like about 10.30. I was like, oh, how are you going? And I was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm sleeping, you know? But anyway, so I saw for a little while and then um, hung up the phone and um, I just closed my eyes. I tend to do that often, right, before I fall asleep. So I just closed my eyes. And I heard like this sound, like whoop, just like that, right? So I opened my eyes and I was looking up to the ceiling. And I was like, what is that? Then all of a sudden, I am seeing my curtain blowing high in the sky, touching the ceiling. And I was like, what? And then the curtain just come back down and it do- my door shook. Like, doo, 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 doo. I was like, what a demon entered the house? I got up and I said, I bind you, demon, and I command you to leave this house now in the name of Jesus Christ. No, I command you to leave now in the name of Jesus Christ, right? And I went and slept, and I am not that brave. Well, I was that brave then, right? I don't know. I believe God gave me the strength, the, the courage um, to do that, right? So I, I, I got up and bind the demon and went back to sleep, and I slept the entire night. Knowing wow. me, that's not normal. That time, wow. I, oh my gosh, that was not normal. That's what, when I got up in the morning, I was like, what? I cannot believe I slept all night. And that happened last night. So anyway, I went to church. It was a Saturday night. So I went to church this Sunday. And I told my pastor's wife what happened. And she was like, what? You know, anyway, that's all that happened. And, thing. and um, um, I came, when I came home from church, I felt to ask my mother. I felt like God telling me, ask your mother what happened. So like she was in the kitchen, right? Downstairs at the time. So I was like, Mommy, you saw anything last night or heard anything last? She was like, What you see? What you hear? I was like, Well, my curtain was blowing. She was like, What? We was in the living room, right? And the curtain was blowing and we just felt this strong wind. And um, yeah, and, and she said that daddy was sleeping and he he um he said that he thought it was an earthquake he felt the, the entire house shook so he placed his hand on the wall but it was at that time that the demon entered the house right but the thing is it entered i believe through my room and i will tell you this too that, that it is important to live a life <laughs> pleasing unto god right oh there's a scripture here for you oh Let's get the scripture. First Corinthians chapter 9. I'm not seeing it out, outright, but I would read the scripture for you to see, right? First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. Uh, well, verse 26 and 27. Paul said, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beat at the air, but I keep under my, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You know, so we need to bring our body into subjection, right? But anyway, so now you know what my son was, right? So anyway, um, at that time, I wasn't living my life, like how God would want me to live my life, right? And uh, being on, I could hide it, but... I want you to know it is important. Our body, you know, every sin, every other sin is outside your body, but you see sexual sin, that 
we should keep away from your sin against your, your own body. You understand? So as, as scriptures say, right? And um, that too could open doorways for the enemy to enter. That's, that could open a lot of doorways for the enemy to enter, right? So anyway, um, to have access in your life. And um, yeah, so that was um, happening at that point in time and which it should not have been as a Christian. And um, and I believe that's why the enemy had a little foothold in, in my life at that point in time, and um, a little while too. Okay, so I don't know if you want me to go into anything else. Well, yeah, I was and I was going to say too. So you think because I know that after this, you have a couple more demonic encounters. So you think that part of that was because of some of these the doorways yeah. that you opened up through that sin? Yes, that plus also um, unforgiveness because I had a mm. serious problem with unforgiveness. I would hold people in mind i would hold people in mind for like if i feel like you say anything to me you do anything to me i would i would hold you in mind yeah mm, yeah yeah that's a that's a big yeah. one yeah and i think there's many people out there that can you know relate to both both of these sins struggling with these sins but i think the, the unforgiveness especially i think is one unfortunately we don't maybe we kind of overlooked that, but that is so crucial. You know, it talks about even forgiving others. So, so that the father can also forgive us in turn. Um, and it's so hard. I think it's so hard uh, when somebody has wronged us to, you know, to immediately go into forgiveness. I think it's, just, it's something we have to really be diligent with. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I appreciate you, you sharing that. I think that's so important that we keep that in mind and how important that is to forgive, to forgive others. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, so uh, it was, it was really, really hard for me to release, you know, a lot of people, you know, like to forgive them. Um, but actually, you're holding yourself in bondage to, to you know, you have yourself in bondage when you keep people in mind. And you, 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 you're holding one of the things that you should let go of, you know. And, you know, I would want people to forgive me. But when it comes to forgiving them, it's like, you want me to forgive you? You understand? But I want, but I apologize. I want you to forgive me, you know? So, right, right. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't right. So, um, yeah, that was, that was, what, um, yeah, I had a lot of unforgiveness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's uh, um, a guy um, that um, came to my job um, some years ago, right? Um, I was, um, Sit so at my desk and like I walked in and um he um came straight over to me and uh, he was like you know good day and it was good day and pertaining to my job he was asking me a lot of questions right and I told him um I um you know I was speaking to him about it and he was talking about you know gospel music he don't like gospel music and all that right but what happened I had a Bible on my desk right so obviously you know he you know. You know, he was like, um, you know, I'm a reverend. And um, I was like, okay, um, okay, you know, just, you know, we're just talking. And then, um, but I was, I found it was so strange that why would a reverend not like gospel music? He is from my, but I had a first religion, right? And he is, he told me he's from that religion. He is the um, second in command. And it, church in the country and um he said um and I said um oh you know I was you know one of that right and he was like oh okay why did you leave and I told him I said God called me right but I mean God didn't call me at that point after after I became a Catholic guess God called me but I told him God called me you know generally speaking and um he said okay I had plans for you I was like, well, he said, I had plans for you. And um, he told me he fights in the spirit for people. Like he would leave his body and fight spiritually, right? So um, when he told me that, I sensed that someone sent him to me, right? Strange, but I just sensed that, right? And um, he, yeah, that was it. And he left the office. Um, you know, he told me, okay, bye. And he left. And um. And that night I came home and I told my mom, I said, mommy, um, I this guy came on work today and he told me, and I told her what he told me. And she said, um, 
and both of us said it at the same time. I don't know. I told her, I, said, I don't know why. And she said, he's coming tonight. Both of us said at the same time, he's coming tonight. I was like, I don't know why, mommy. I think the same thing. I feel like God telling me that this person is going to come tonight. I felt it all day after he left. And I felt that. I told her, I, said, I felt that. And she said, but you know, they fight in the spirit, right? So, so what I did, I... I, I I used to read a lot of deliverance books, as I told you, right? So like a lot of Lester Summerall, um, Derek Prince, and all this, right? Yeah. Um, I can't remember which book, which author that said this, right? So I what I do, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ around my room. So I said, I plead the blood of Jesus over my room, over every door, every crease, every crevice, um, over my bed, under my bed. And I decree that only God and his angels are allowed in this room in Jesus' name. And I plead the blood of Jesus over me and I went and sleep. Right? So I, like about 12 something, to get up to go to the washroom. And I was like, I could move. I felt like someone, I felt the, the fingers, I felt. And I knew it was fingers. It's really strange, but I, I knew it was fingers. I felt the fingers. I felt the hand. I, I it felt like iron though. I don't know. It was really strong, right? I was pressing me to the bed. And I tried to say Jesus, but I couldn't, it couldn't come out, right? So I was like, and it couldn't come out. I was like, oh, and I tried to say Jesus, but it can't come out, right? And then I said, um, um, then well, I, I Finally, well, trying to muffle, mumble, you know, muffle um, Jesus. And my, to tell you the truth, I don't know, it's really strange because this first time this ever happened to me, right? And my, I don't know if my spiritual eyes, I believe my spiritual eyes open, right? Which is really strange. My wardrobe shifted in my room. It shifted in my room. It just shifted across the room, shift. Um, uh, uh, my wardrobe have a mirror on it, right? And I am seeing like smoke over me, like a gray smoke over me. And um, and I said, I bind you. And I speak, I was able to speak. And I say, Mr. I don't even know why I called him Mr. But anyway, that's what I said, right? I said, I bind you, Mr. And I call him by his name because I remember he told me his name. And I said, I command you to leave now in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, for it is written, right? And I said, for it is also written that whatsoever I lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven and I lose God's angels so on my behalf in Jesus' name. And as I say that, I tell you, I saw this thing outside my room, a short thing, right? I can't say it's a person because it's not, right? Well, not a, a human being, right? I saw something outside my room and it was short and it had horns and it was pointing me and looking at me like like with hatred, right? And um and then I was like, what? I got up from my bed. I was like, what was that? This man and then I would see this man, like all of a sudden he would in taxi. He's a taxi driver all of a sudden. And then all of a sudden you would see him like standing looking at me like yeah, all over, like well, a certain uh town. Every time I go to that, like, well, at that one point, every time I go to that town, I would see him looking at me. Like, I would send someone looking at me. And when I look, I would see him, you know? Um, yeah, so, yeah. Wow. And you, and you knew pretty much right away that there was a connection between what was in your room and, and with this man? Yes. Yes. Wow. I, I just knew uh, because I knew too in that belief, uh, they believe in fighting in the spiritual realm. And that is a another story but they believe in going into the spiritual realm getting gifts um fighting spiritually um like the heads like the heads would usually do that you know and um it's a lot of like witchcraft stuff and like but not so obvious if you understand what i'm saying as much yeah 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 definitely right it reminds me because we have a lot of people on the show that were in the new age those types of beliefs and so it sounds like he was mixing those you know pagan types of beliefs there with maybe some of the Christian beliefs and, and inter, intermingling them? Yes, is a, is a, is a, the belief is from like African origin. Mm. So it's, um, yeah. Wow. A lot of different, because we're Christianity too. So, so you would think that they are Christians, but you know, they are not, you know. And it's a, it's a great example of how the enemy just tries to take, you know, the word of God and twist it just a little bit. You know, like there are gifts, there are gifts that God can give us, but we, we don't have to go and, to the spiritual realm to get those gifts you know god god gives them holy spirit gives gives those gifts as as he 
pleases in order to fulfill God's purposes. Um, so yeah, just taking again, just like the, the enemy always does a little bit of truth, twisting it just a little bit. And, and then it turns into a lie. Exactly. You know, so and I um, remember the enemy will, you know, sometimes come as an angel of light. You understand? He could come out like, you know, make you feel, hey, this is, this is, you know, you, the, this is the truth. But really and truly, it, that's why you need to back up everything with the word, you know? Always go to the word and search the scriptures. Don't just take things and run with it and then you're not 100% sure. You know, you're just taking people word for it. Always go to the scriptures, pray, ask God to, you know? So anyway, you have a friend too, <laughs> which um, maybe about uh, three years ago, um, um, he calls me, right? He was a very good friend close friend right um um so you know we talk and whatever so i remember i think i was watching preaching or was what i can't remember what i was watching and they ended up calling me and we were talking on um, that evening probably about seven or so right and um i don't know he have a tendency of falling asleep because he worked two jobs right so you know sometimes he'll call me and he would be sitting, you know which is something. Um, anyway, so he called me and he would talk and then he would just like knock out and then he would stop back talking and get a, get a thing. But anyway, so he was talking to me this night and um and I was actually, I wouldn't say, I was listening to YouTube. I was watching YouTube too, right? So but I do obviously I'm telling him I'm watching YouTube too. So he can hear like, talking and I hear him say something, I'll answer. Oh yeah, you know? So anyway, so he fell asleep and um then I, I, like you know like I yeah like if he's trying to get my attention like he's like mm, like trying to say my name so I um paused the video and um I was listening and I'm like mm -hmm. like you know like he's trying to say something so I said oh my gosh some you know um um how do you call it sleep paralysis right because that would happen to me too many times so I yeah. realized what sleep paralysis so I said um I bind you, demon, and I command you to leave now in the name of Jesus Christ. And he was still trying to call me, just a fighting, right? So I was like, hmm, why? I said, is this because I wanted to myself, you know, like if I lost, you know, my connection with God. So I was like, I bind you, demon, and I command you to leave now in the name of Jesus Christ. And he's still muffling. So I said this like three times, right? And then I said, you know, I will use scripture. So I said, I bind you demon for it is written whatsoever i bind on earth I shall, um whatsoever i bind on earth is bound in heaven right and whatsoever i loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven um so anyway so i say bind you demon and i command you to leave him now in the name of jesus christ i loose and i call his name in the name of jesus christ and Immediately, he was like, oh, Tina, oh my gosh, kill something, you, you were saying something? And immediately, I don't know what you were saying, I wasn't hearing what you were saying, but immediately, whatever, it is released. Like, what you were saying? As I was speaking scripture, it's like, we kill. You know, like, you know, that's how he talks to me, he's like, Tina, he's a prayer for my, you know, and that kind of thing, he talks to my time a lot. But, um, yeah, so then, um, another time, which is last year, right? So last year, this friend um, called me, again like about 7 30 i was listening to this pastor he's a caribbean pastor so i like to listen to, to him so i was listening to him on friday night and um um so by listening to this pastor he called me so i answered the phone um i was calling my hair too actually i was calling my hair multitasking so i was calling my hair on my bed and i was listening to the pastor and then i paused the video to answer the call and it's talking to me and whatever and then um, I hear silence, right? There's just silence. So I say, oh, you fall asleep again. So I tend to fall asleep. So I think I hung up the phone. Mommy um, knocked on my door, came in to check on me. And, I, you know, I kind of motioned her on the phone, you know? So she left, right? As she left, like, a few seconds, I heard, like, he's growling. I mean, he's just growling, like, like, I can't really imitate it, but it's a like growling, right? Yeah. So I was like, just knowing something like a growl, but I think it's myself. I said, but I'll call him tomorrow and tell him that he's strong, like, you know, it's knowing like a growling. But anyway, I was thinking, right? So anyway, um, so I about to hang up the phone 
Und dann habe ich hier, Tina. Oh, I was like, but the guy kind of growled, right? Tina. Right? And I was like, I call any person name. And then I hear, Tina. I call him again. Truly, oh, this is not the speaker. Right? But immediately, like, it sense my mother left the room. Right? And said, let's call my name. So it said my name like three times. And then um, it spoke a word said, Tina, you're not here now. What? Like this, right? Tina, you're not here now. What? And I was like, like I'm not lying. I got something speaking through him directly to me on the phone, you know? And um, yeah, so um, yeah, so it um, for my name, I have I call it the the first time I called, right? So the second time I called, he answered, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, like about him, like yeah." I was like, "You were saying something just now, like no, I was I was sleeping." I was like. No, he was saying something. He's like, no, I was sleeping. I was like, no, he was saying something. He's like, no, I was sleeping. You know? I was like, oh, okay, all right. And I hung up the phone, right? And then in the morning now, I called him. And I said, you know, last night, right? I told him what happened last night. He was like, Tina, I know you are telling me the truth because I heard something speaking to you. I heard something speaking to you. There was no one in my room. There's no one. My door is locked. And I heard something speaking to you last night. So I know you're telling me the truth. And um, if can you please pray for me, please? And he asked me to pray for him. And I met him in person and pray for him. And um, he told me, not too long ago, he told me. Um, he said, you know, when he prayed for me, he said, um, I heard um, I heard the, the same thing. And he said, the thing, right? I heard the thing speaking to me in my sleep and it was speaking in a different language I was like what did he yeah, I was speaking the same like to pray for me like wherever it is like it just like it fighting like it, I don't know probably trying to get back into him I don't know right so yeah so that was going on and um yeah wow um, yeah and, and um I was gonna say that's two you know, two things on that one is that that is a perfect example of those dreams coming to pass uh, as it relates to deliverance. It sounds like you were able to do some of that there and, um, and, and help this person out. And I, I, as I sit here, think or listening to you speak on this, I, I think the question comes up to me, what was this person's um, spiritual background? Do you think that they, was he opening door doorways to the demonic realm? You think? Well, I would tell you this, this person is, um, but I would say they don't think so, but I would say that they have a anger uh, problem. They they would get angry for things and it's like anger is like I mean to me I feel like sometimes it's like way over what you know it this situation deserves. Like like they would get angry for simple things that it's like why why are you angry for that? You know, that kind of thing. Um yeah, yeah, but the thing is, I can't say because everybody have their limit of um to get angry, right? But I feel like it's just overboard, and I, I sense that um it's not normal. Yeah, uh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, that makes total sense. And the enemy's always looking for those any little crevice, any little small weakness that he can try to exploit. He'll he'll try to sneak in that way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wow. There's another one. And, um, I'll tell you this one too. With, um, I sorry, someone is telling me that you know you should write a book, but that's one I don't want to do that because I want everyone to know go, how awesome God is for free. If you understand what I'm saying, but let me, I have so many t- stories. Yeah, no, it's incredible. And maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe there's an opportunity. I'm sure God will let you know. Maybe there's an opportunity down the road to, to write a book and, and, you know, just publish it on the internet for free. Who knows? I'm, I know he'll let you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. But um, yes, true. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, but he, I didn't feel, I, well, not so, well, I don't feel led 
right now to do that. So yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll let you know. He advised me. Yeah. So yeah, um, this time um, one of my friends that died, right, and they called me and asked me to pray for them. Um, to not pray, sorry, to sing Amazing Grace, right? So I went um to this church. This is like second time I think I went to that church, but anyway. I went to the church and I sang Amazing Grace. And while after singing Amazing Grace, but actually while I was singing Amazing Grace, I was crying because I was just thinking how great my God is, how wonderful my God is. Just listening to the words of the song while I was singing this song, it had me in tears, right? While singing. But anyway, so I went um, um and sang and as I was about to come off um, come down from the altar a lady was in the aisle right I never saw her before and um, she pointed at, she was pointing at me she was kind of pointing at me and she said that young lady right but when she was saying it then I noticed her right I wasn't really paying attention to it. and uh, she pointed at me and she said that young lady and like kind of like I shouldn't say angry kind of she was yelling and she was right and um and I was surprised nobody turned around. This lady talking so loud in church and nobody turned around, right? But anyway, so I, I brushed it off, right? I was like, anyway, and I just walked down um, the aisle, and, um, sorry, the altar, and I went and sat in an aisle seat, right? On the, if you're standing on the altar, I was sitting on the left in an aisle seat, right? So I'm sitting in this aisle seat now, and all of a sudden this person walked up to me well, I from behind, right? And she touched me on my shoulder, right? And I, I was like, you know, because I was like, I don't know this person. And she was like, please accept my sympathy. And I was like, I am not a relative of the dead. That's like that I told her, right? And she just walked off. So I was like, who's this lady? She just didn't any point in me, like, following me. Anyway, so I, um, I had when we, after service and everything, we went to the cemetery. And while at the cemetery, but well, I went to the cemetery to um, comfort my friend and thing. And um, while, I'm sorry for the dogs barking in the background now. Right? No problem. Yeah. So um, while at the cemetery, um, I decided to walk out of the cemetery after a lot of people walked out. Some people walked out, right? And they were standing outside. And I was standing outside um, um, to talk, but actually, I was talking on my phone, right? I was upset with somebody, right? Uh, a boyfriend at the time. So I was upset with him. And um, we were arguing on the phone, right? I was upset. I, tell you, I was so upset. I feel like, oh my gosh, I can't forgive this person. I'm like, well, that kind of way. But it wasn't anything really serious. But I was upset with them, right? Um, yeah, we were kind of like arguing and thing on the phone. So I was outside and um, I hung up on the person. I hung up on him, right? And then... Um, this lady, I saw this lady coming towards me again, right? And she passed through because I had some people before she reached me. She passed through that, like in the middle of them. And it was coming straight up at me. So I placed my hand out, my right hand out to shake her hand. And I was because I asked her, where do I know you from, right? So I, I placed my hand out and she pushed my hand, right? She pushed my hand aside and she walked up to me and hugged me. And she hugged me for a while. And I was like, she mashed my foot too, right? Then I was like, that's, that's what I ended up doing. Then she wearing a suede shoe. She was all in black. Um, obviously, a lot of people was all in black. Um, and she was all in black. And um, she just smiled and turned and walked off. I was like, who's this lady? But, you know, I just like brush it off again. Anyway, so I went home that evening. And um, at the entrance, well, mommy was like, be you going with that shoe? You come from the funeral, you know, from from funeral with this muddy shoe from cemetery and what are coming inside this place. <laughs> so anyway, so I take off my um my shoe and um, I say, you know what, I'll leave it, I'll leave it like in the entrance by the garage there. So anyway, so I left my shoe there and um and I went inside shower and everything and and went to bed, right? But what happened is that we were doing over the entire house, right? We were doing everything over in the house. So we were camping out in the living room, right? So the living room was basically the last place to, to do everything. So we were camping out in the living room and whatever. Um, we did this for a while, till the entire well, the house was built, right? Um, 
renovated, right? So, um, yeah, so I was sleeping on a couch in the living room. And um, I got up that night because it was, it was bothering me so much, you know, my boyfriend at the time, we were arguing and things. So, um, it was bothering me so much. I said, you know, I'll go into the into the gallery and I will sit, I sit there, right? But the thing is, the gallery, um, well, the living room, well, not the living room, but the front door. But the front front door, it would squeak like when you open it, it would make kind of like uh, kind of noise. So I said, you know what? I will go through the back door and walk through the garage and come around because we have burglar proofing around the house. So if you're outside, you're not really outside kind of thing. Um, unless you're really outside, out, like outside the garage. Yeah. So um, we could walk through the back door and come out into the garage and go into the gallery. So I walked out of the, the, um, the back door and as I walked out the back door, all of the lights switched off around the house, right? It was like, da, 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 da. right? Sorry. Yeah. So the lights was like that, mm. went like that. And I was like, what, electricity going? But the thing is electricity, you know, it just like snap off and it rarely ever happens, huh? but you know, sometimes electricity will go. But anyway, so um, I was like, but how, like somebody had to be running around the house because when I look, when I look outside, I saw my neighbor's light on, lights on, right? My neighbor's lights on. It's like, how is that possible? Only our lights switch off. But anyway, but, and the thing is, I know it's not someone running around the house because you have to be speeding to take off all the lights around the house, right? And still you can't do it. Anyway, so um, I was walking in the garage now. I was like, whatever, you know? You know, and I just walk in going to the darkest point in the garage. I heard a voice say, God. Just like that, right? It say, come. I was like, what? I, just, I turned around. I wasn't even thinking to bind him on. I wasn't even thinking that. I turned around and I started to walk back quick and I feel like eyes like like something circling me which is very strange right I was feeling like it's something circling me like spiritual something like a spirit, evil spirit circling me right and um I felt also like there was another one which is real strange but I feel like another one stand up looking at me from another angle strange but that's what I felt right it could be one I don't know right um I went into the back I went inside through the back door telling me I reached on the couch and then I started buying the demon I started buying the demon on the couch right kind of funny but I was afraid right I was afraid I was really afraid and I started buying it I was like what but the thing is too I was angry too I was angry at somebody and I feel like you know and I feel that too was the cause of it usually I tend to be which is real strange in strange situation I tend to be brave which I believe God has been God would give me the um the courage at the point in time. And because of I had this kind of like a little unforgiveness, it wasn't really anything too serious, but I had a little unforgiveness. I was angry and thing, you know. And um at the time, and um I feel like that opened a doorway too. You understand, you understand? So so yeah. That's, that's wow. Awesome. Wow. So after that, after you sat on the couch and binding the demon, did did you feel like that relieved what was going on? Like it you didn't feel like the presence was there anymore? Actually, yes, I didn't feel like the present was there anymore. But I think too is because I run. <laughs> because, um, I, but the thing is, I don't, I don't know. At the point in time, I, I felt like, yeah, I was, I was comfortable. I was, I didn't feel a fear or anything when I was inside. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. All those it just shows you. I, you know, this isn't the first time yeah. I've heard of something like that where demons do have access to things like electricity and can mess with our electricity. I've heard it, you know, here I've heard it, um, they can mess with the car lights, you know, and the dashboard and headlights. Um, so they'll, they'll certainly try to do those things to scare you. But again, going back to that dream you had before, just remembering that God is, is stronger than even beings that can do that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, um, yeah, so sometimes, I mean, I'm only human, right? So sometimes I would be scared and sometimes, again, sure. I'm so brave, I would just, you know, speak and I would speak scriptures and I, you know, I'm not scared here. And then sometimes, again, I'm, I feel like scared. But the, ten, the, the time that I feel scared is when, like, 
certain, I don't know, it's like certain times, like, I don't know, probably like if I'm uh, like angry or like certain times, I don't know, it's really strange. And then sometimes again, I'll be brave, even if I'm, I I, I don't know, I, it's really strange, but yeah, sometimes I'm scared and sometimes I'm brave. Yeah, maybe when there's other things going on in your life that makes it, it makes it easier maybe to be more frightened in those situations. Yeah, so yeah, maybe. Wow, another 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 powerful experience. Yep. Um, and um, yeah, but I mean, it's important to to live your life right, especially if you see this kind of this area. If I believe this is what God calling me, and right, yeah, you have to be living your life right because if the enemy see that little you know entrance, he would take the opportunity to get at you, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so true, so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's another incident. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to remember some other things that happened to me. Oh, well, I would tell you this um, story of healing, right? Yeah, yeah, please. I, I really enjoy this. Well, um, my, um, I, my mom and my brother was sick with chicken pox, right? And I was like, you know, cooking and, you know, taking care of making sure everything good with them and whatever. And I would go to work too. So when I, um, so one day I, I saw spots, like probably a week after they got chicken pox, I, I took my shower to get ready for work and um, I was getting ready for work. And I was like, what is this on my hands, right? I was like, oh my gosh, I get a chicken box. I was thinking, right? Oh my gosh, I get a chicken box. So I placed my hand on my head and I try to calm myself, right? I place my hand on my head and I say, I am healed from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. For it is written that by Jesus' stripes I am healed. Therefore, I declare that I am healed by Jesus' stripes, right? And I place my hand on my head, I'm saying this. And I went to work, not thinking nothing of it, right? I went to work. I didn't even tell mommy or anybody, actually, right? I wasn't even thinking. Like I just keep it to myself, right? And um, so the next day I was getting ready. I forget about that, right? The next day I get ready for work. Went and took my shower and I was like, wait a minute, what? my skin clay, not a spot. I tell you, my hands had spots on it, red spots on it. And it wow. went at all, everything. My skin was clay, clay, not even a spot on it. Oh, wow. God. Praise God. I was like, God, thank you. I was like, praise God. Oh my gosh. But the thing is, I know nobody would believe me because no one saw it. Because I, mm -hmm. at work, I would wear long sleeves. You understand? I would wear long sleeves. And, you know, and I was so, I couldn't, you know, I, I told mommy and, and uh, but I probably was like, okay, because they never saw it. Yeah. But I can assure you that it happened. You know, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that's where the childlike faith comes in too. I think just, you know, taking people at, at their word, especially somebody, um, you know, like yourself, you see, you, you, I'm, I'm sure you, you, you know, you seem like somebody that's very, uh, credible. And, um, even if somebody didn't exactly see the miracle itself, I think that, um, just, yeah, just being able to share your testimony with people, I think that the, the right people, when they hear it, you know, that like, like the Bible says, um, those, those who have ears to hear will hear. Yes, exactly. And the thing is, too, uh, I believe that, uh, you know, if God, well, I mean, if you, um, if God wants you to know, you would know that I'm, you know what I'm saying? You would not tell the truth. I mean, it will have yeah. to be who it should have to be lying, you understand? But um, I believe that God will make it known unto you if it's supposed, you understand? If yeah it's, yeah it's, you're supposed to know this and if you 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 open your eyes and that kind of thing i guess you know i i'm not trying to convince anybody actually i just tell them my testimony and who believe believe and who don't well you know um it's probably not their time yet or probably they're not um of his fault you know yeah yeah all comes back to god's plan and his perfect timing exactly it, it, and on that note too i i um, would love to hear the other, you had another incredible healing experience. And, and this is with somebody that had the, the tumor. Yeah. Um, this happened. 
okay, I can't say when, but years ago, right? So um, this person, which is a close relative, right? Um, she came to me uh, an, e an evening after work, and um, she was like, you know, I'm getting a lot of headaches. I was like, okay, but I find it so strange that she just come to me and just tell me that just like that, right? So I was like, okay, you should, you should go to the doctor and uh, find out what's wrong, right? And she said, okay. And she just, you know, she gone. She left, right? And so maybe about three weeks, two weeks or so later, um, she came back and she said, you know, um, the doctor said the same uh, tumor, you know, in her brain and thing. And she showed me the scans and thing. I saw the scans and whatever. I told her, I said, you know what? I will, um, I, but I believe she wanted me to pray for her, right? Um, the way how she moved, right? And um, so I told her, I said, well, I'm going to take my shower. I'm going to take my shower. I will pray for her, right? And, and she said, okay, right? So I took my shower and I remember singing this song in the shower. And the song was, Holy, are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, right? So, so I sang in this song, right? Um, so I sing this song in the shower. I just sing it up my lungs. I just like to sing, right? I love to sing. So I'll be singing this in the shower. And my brothers will be like, girl, you can't sing. But anyway, I love to sing. So I sing it in the shower. And then um, um I but I was singing this song like I was asking God, are you Lord God Almighty? Right? I was I was singing this song. I, not like how the the uh, person, the songwriter, ex it, but wanted it to be sung, I guess, because they're singing it and saying, um, Woody, are you Lord God Almighty? But I was singing um, um, holy and asking, are you Lord God Almighty? Like a question in God, right? I don't know why I even do that, right? I was, I was thinking, I saw the song sing, right? So I was singing it like that. And I was asking God, are you Lord God Almighty, you know, and I, so what I did, when I uh, was taking my shower, I, I pleaded with Brother Jesus around my bathroom, right, I said, I plead with Lord of Jesus over this room, over every door, every crease, every crevice, only God and his angels are allowed in this room in Jesus' name, so I, I changed my clothes and whatever, right, in my room, and I said, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over this room, over every door, every crease, every crevice. Only God and his angels are allowed in this room in Jesus' name. Right? And then I went out, I opened the door, and I was like, hey, you know, I called her. So she came inside. And um, um, she sat on my bed, right? My door was open still. And I was about to pray for her. And she, she did this sh sign right she didn't do she, but she did the sign like she don't want me to, she don't want anybody to know i'm praying for her right so i went and i closed my room door i locked it actually and she was sitting on my bed so i placed my right hand on her shoulder right and i started to speak scripture i didn't pray for her actually i was speaking scripture right because i tend to speak scripture a lot because god said remind me of my word right you say, remind me of my word. It's very important to speak the scriptures, right? So I placed my hand on her shoulder and I said, I declare that she shall live and not die. She shall live and declare the works of God. Um, no weapon formed against her shall prosper. And I bind you, brain demon. I was like, what? Why did I say brain demon? I was thinking, myself, I, my thought is to say tumor. And it came out my mouth, a brain demon. Strange, but that's how it happened. It come out, right? And I say, um, and I command you to leave her now in the name of Jesus Christ. Just said I spoke with authority. And she opened, um, no, sorry, before that happened, sorry. <laughs> before I started praying for her, because I, I locked my door, right? Sorry, I kind of go ahead of time. But um, I locked my door and she sat on my bed and I placed my hand on her shoulder. And when I placed my hand on her shoulder, um, uh, what came out of my mouth surprised me and her, right? Because uh, she was surprised. I was surprised too. Um, as I closed my eyes to, to speak scripture over her, um, what came out of my mouth is, God is going to heal you. And she was like, what? And she drew back on my bed, right? She was kind of basically laying on my bed, kind of like looking at me like, what? So, and I was like, what? 
and she, both of us looked at each other for a little while. I was like, I did not say that. So that was, I told her, right? I was like, I did not say that. She was like, what? And she looked at me. I was like, how do I know that God is going to heal her? It just came out of my mouth. I believe God wanted her to know he's going to heal her. So anyway, so then I speak the scripture over her. Well, but I said, I bind you, brain, um, brain demon. I commanded to leave her now in the name of Jesus Christ. And, um, and I told her, get up every day like Job and speak scripture over your life, right? And she was like, what do you mean, right? Because she don't know. So I told her, I say, I'm going to write scriptures for you. And I want you to speak the scriptures every day. Put your hand on your head and speak the scriptures every day. And she said, okay. So um, the next day, I met her in the corridor, right? So we came out of our room at the same time. So I was like, I was like, what? I was like, hey, you declare day? She was like, yeah, I declare my day. But hear this, hear this, right? Um, well, she told me someone told her that they dreamt that a dark shadow left her, right? And I was like, good, good. I was like, good. She didn't tell them that I prayed for her, right? So I was like, good. I said, continue declaring it. But I would get up every morning. I would speak scripture for her. But I never told her to a thing. I never told her I did that either. So I used to get up every morning and speak. She shall live. She shall live and not die. And I used to be speaking in the room. But I try to speak easy because I don't want you know people to think I'm crazy too. But yet too, I would speak the scripture. And I kind of know. I don't want them to know that I'm doing something for someone. If you understand what I'm saying. So I would do. I would speak scripture. And I speak in a ton of... You know, I would walk around my room and I would speak scripture and I would say, she shall live. I declare that she shall live in the name of Jesus. You understand that kind of thing? And I would speak. And um, yes, yeah, so I walk around my room and I would do that, right? But I, obviously I do. I shouldn't say I don't want the people to think I'm crazy. I don't want to be like loud ad advertising that, hey, I'm praying for this person kind of thing. You understand what I'm saying? So anyway, yeah, yeah. So that is why too, I keep my voice on a low level. I'll pray for people I kind of, tongue low kind of thing nobody knew that kind of thing right we shouldn't be advertising that anyway too so anyway um yeah so i did that and um for about three weeks two weeks i can't even remember right she remember by um by the doctor right and um you know she forgot to call me i forgot to call her i pray and fasted half day for her but i never told anyone right so i pray and fasted for her half day and then i had my my lunch and um and yeah, so I forgot to call her until about four. Like I believe God reminded me. It's so, like about four thirty or two, right? Or four, about four p.m. And um, I was like, I called her. I was like, you, I see you didn't call me to tell me what the doctor say. She was like, yeah, doctor say, you can't find nothing. They do scans, can't find nothing, can't find nothing. Healed in the name of Jesus Christ. You understand what I'm saying? And then only like about two years ago, um, I asked her, I said, you know, yeah, I was wondering if you heard me in a different voice or something. And she said, she can't remember. She heard me in a different voice. But I know I heard my voice, right? But I, I wondered because the way how she was surprised, you know, and looking at me like, what? When when it came out of my mouth, God is going to heal you. You know? Because mm -hmm. how could I tell someone God is going to heal them? I believe God allow her to know you're going, I'm going to heal you. You understand? So she wouldn't have any doubt about it. She would know it's, it's him and only him, you know? Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is just so, so incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is it. And um, then I, I had a, uh, well, I'll tell you about my visions now. <laughs> Please, yeah. I, yeah. I had um, um, a vision. Um, I had a, well, a couple, but um, one vision, the first vision I ever had was um, um, in my early walk too. And um, I I came home from church on Sunday, right? What I would do, the Christian gift shop I used to go to, I would meet youths there, right? Like people around my age. So we would talk about God, talk, we'd read the Bible together, we'd call each other, that kind of thing, encourage each other and that kind of thing, which was really good, right? So it's good to kind of encourage each other, you know, as Christians. So we would encourage each other and read the word. We would meet in the Christian gift shop on an evening, like a Friday, and we would pray together and that kind of thing, right? And laugh and talk and that kind of thing, so... Anyway, so that would be used to do, right? And um, so this person now, um, but we exchanged numbers. So one of them called me this Sunday 
And I was like, well, after church, and I was like, oh, what did your pastor preach today? And we would talk about what pastor preached, and they would tell me what their pastor preached, and we would talk about what we get from it, and that kind of thing, right? So that we used to do. And then um, this person, now, we would go real deep into the scripture. So we sometimes we go in for like, well, I just guessed it, like about two hours or something. And we go in, you know, till we would talk a little bit, laugh, well, I'll go back, you know? And then, um, so I told the person, I said, you know what? I, I should go and spend some time with my family, right? Because at that time, I used to be, you know, to myself a, a lot, right? So I said, I should go. I, I feel like I should go and spend time with my family. And I went into the living room and they were looking at Animal Planet or something. That's Discovery Channel, something, right? And um, it was boring, but I just wanted to be there around them, right? So I just sat there on the couch, not even five minutes, you know? And then I um less than five minutes I'm sitting on the couch and then I am in another room in the house I am in a bathroom in the house right so I am in this bathroom standing my hands at my side but like I'm standing I, I'm not even thinking about I should be on the couch I'm not even thinking about these things right I don't know it's real strange but I'm not even thinking about anything besides looking at what's going on right so my hands are at my side and I felt like in my spirit someone is telling me look look that's what I feel, felt right I believe God is telling me look look right so but I'm not hearing him audibly so I'm standing there and my hands on the side it's like in my spirit form, right? I believe I was in my spirit form, right? Uh, my my mom, um, my mom was taking a shower and um, she was naked, but I'm not looking at her nakedness, right? So I believe, of course, you know, as she, in the physical realm, I believe that that we we would look at nakedness, but I'm not even looking at her nakedness. I'm just looking at her, like I'm looking at her face, like I, I don't even know, but I was looking at her, right? And she um she slipped. All right, she was about to step over, took more of shower, and she slipped, fell, and hit her head and wasn't moving. And all of a sudden, I'm in the living room again. I was like, oh my gosh, what just happened? I was, what? I was thinking that, right? I get up, like, I try to be calm, right? And I get up and I went to my room and I kneeled down and I said, God, please, please don't mommy, my please, please. And I was crying, God, right? Because I, 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 assumed that my mother was going to die. He's telling me that my mother's going to die. This is the first time I'm, I have I had a vision, right? So I I took it for what it was. I, I thought he's telling me directly that my, it's my mother, right? And, um, I was praying that evening. I was crying out to God. I was real. I was sad because I was thinking that my mom's going to die and go through me in advance, right? And um, so I went out to work. That was the Sunday. I went out to work the Monday and um, this girl at work, right? This girl at work, she don't, we don't talk, and we would say good morning, good afternoon, you know, like like acquaintances, right? We don't talk on like a close level. And she ran over to me and she was like, Tina, oh my gosh. I was like, what? She's like, well, mommy, remember mommy come from, came from Canada because her mom lived abroad, right? And she's like, well, she slipped um, in the shower, fell and hit her head and died. I was like, what? What? She's like, yes. And she just turned and woke up, you know, and she left the office. I was like, oh my gosh. That, I believe God was telling me to pray for whoever it is, but I thought it was my mother. You understand? So sometimes the vision don't be straight, you know, but um, yeah, that was a kind of, oh my gosh, moment. I, yeah. Yeah. That what happened to me. And um, yeah, and, that, and that's what I I was wondering. Um, I know you you state that God was giving you an opportunity to pray uh, for the, this other person in this case. I'm wondering why do you think that God showed you uh, this person as your your mom, and and why do you think in a manner that you like with in this type of a manner you couldn't have done anything to prevent it? So why do you think God showed it to you in this way? Uh, I believe that God showed it to me for me to intercede for her to pray for her life to save her life maybe because she, I mean, as far as i understand she was a christian right and um i believe that god wanted me to, to intercede for her to, to, for her i i don't know what she was going through at that point in time you know but um mm -hmm. spiritually meaning that i don't know how her life was with christ but i believe that god probably wanted me to pray for her but i assumed it was my mom wow wow so in other words like 
you, giving you an opportunity to be in her shoes and, and kind of experience what she experienced with, with her mom passing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And, um, I, yeah, I believe it. I, I, I was supposed to pray for her mom, but I did not know at that point in time. So I believe God probably, you know, showed me for me to intercede for her. But mm. I did not know about visions. Like I never had a vision before that. So I didn't know what to expect. I assumed it was that there. Yeah. Um, my mom. Yeah. You've shared, uh, uh, you know, a multitude of absolutely incredible testimonies. And you, um, I've already really enjoyed this. And I was going to say there's, I know at least one more is related to the UFO experience. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, what happened was um, in my early walk, right? Uh, probably maybe a year or two um, being a Christian. I, I heard it. Oh, I, I think I saw it on TV. I think um, there was some American show <laughs> with UFOs. I think it was uh, X-Files, I think. X-Files, yeah, I think it was X-Files, right? So anyway, so it's showing it on TV and saying, I, I, I get, you know, like, hmm, interesting with it. And that's right. Well, I think someone talked about that. I can't remember. Anyway, so... I was what I, I went online researching UFOs because I said hmm, the Bible never spoke about that. And um so I started doing that and um which hmm, I would advise um everyone not to do. Um yeah, so I went researching UFOs and um and like a few weeks after that I was reading my Bible in the night and um I saw a light appear on my page, right? It was an orange light and um, it was like moving around the page slowly, right? So I was thinking to myself, because my bed was um, by a window. So I said, I said, um, okay, maybe um, a light outside, you know, um, flashing on my um, bed. So I turned on the bed sideways and I um, was, start to read the bible again and i saw the slide appear again so i said oh probably it's the um necklace my uncle gave me right i love this necklace so much i would wear this necklace to even sleep yeah so i was sleeping with this necklace right so i had this necklace on and i was reading i said probably it's the necklace so i blocked the necklace and i was when i looked at the bible i saw the light still right i was like hmm why is this like, and it was moving but there's a wall behind me there's nothing on the wall why is the light flashing why is the light on my bible right so then i realized that i taught right right away that it was me investigating ufos right so i started to rebuke it and i said i rebuke i I bind you and I command you to leave now in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind you. And I, 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 but I had to be doing that over and over and over because it was, and when I was doing that, it was like moving over the page quickly, like really, really fast, up, down, you know, like really, really fast, right? All over the page. And now um, it was a distracting spirit, right? So I would tell people that UFOs, aliens, right, are demons, they are distracting spirits. I rebuked it. I rebuked it for a while. I, I, maybe about 13 minutes, maybe. Because I was like, why is this? You know, and they like, don't want to leave. And, you know, I, I was rebuking it, rebuking it. And it ended up leaving after. And I realized this me searching things. Long as it's not in the scriptures. If it is not uh, God's word, you understand? There's only, there's only good and evil. There's only good and evil first off. Right? If it is not good, it is evil. You know, so um, what I was saying, they are abducting people. I mean, taking them off their, without um, their own free will. God don't do that. God do not do that. God gives us a choice. He, he, he allows us to choose. You understand? So you're telling me that something um, that you think is so good is abducting you. You know? And doing all sorts of things to you and it's good there's only good and evil right so yeah so i would um yeah realize that I, since i was um investigating ufos that court it opened a doorway it opened a doorway to a distracting spirit and um 
yeah which is not good so yeah and we and we've heard that before that even just looking into things like the UFO phenomenon can open up a doorway that's mm-hmm. it, it sounds exactly like what happened with you and mm-hmm. um yeah and perfectly stated you know again the enemy's always trying to create a little bit of gray area it makes it yeah. seem like there is something more than just good and evil when reality is as simple as you said no if it's not good then it's it's of the enemy exactly it can only be one or two things and i i saw um i think i saw a video i don't want to, I, I think i saw a video oh i read it online that woman said that the same thing happened to her and then i was like it was a few years after and i was like wow actually it happened to someone else so you know you know if i i was thinking to myself people might probably thought i was crazy to tell them that but to hear this woman or to, to read that this woman said the same thing happened to her you know it confirms that you know i mean i know for sure it is true but you know probably telling others they might think that this is not this can't be normal you know it can't be true but um yeah you, um, I believe that when I was researching these things, it opened that doorway for this distracting spirit. Mm, yeah. And I'm sure, you know, given all the miraculous testimonies you share with us today, you're, you're doing the same thing for somebody else out there. I'm sure there are people that have had similar experiences as you and um, you're, you know, providing comfort for people today. I, I'm, I'm sure of that, giving them that, that reassurance that they're not alone. And what they're experiencing and that this there is a spiritual there is spiritual warfare going on around us at all times mm-hmm. exactly and um yeah just um you know i just want to reach out to people out there i mean i know there are some people who not um have well don't know christ yet and they will soon come to know christ um in these times and um um I just want to say, you know, that um, God loves you. He loves you before even you even love him. He loves you. You understand? And he he cares for you. He wants to know you. He wants to have a relationship with you. You understand? He, I mean, ask if you don't even know. If you don't know if this God is real, ask. Say, God, whoever you are, true God, I want to know you. Reveal yourself unto me. And I'm telling you, as long as you genuinely ask him, he will um he will answer you if you genuinely ask really the only other question i have after all all these incredible experiences and i'm sure other people want to know too is that you know you've had the opportunity to to witness many many uh miraculous and, and you know supernatural types of experiences and so i'm wondering why why do you think that god has given you um so many of these different experiences um i I believe that, um, I don't know, probably he knows my heart. He knows that I want to serve him. And he he chose me probably before the foundations of the earth. Like everybody, I believe that you have a special um, uh, purpose in life. As well as I have a special purpose. Everybody has a special purpose, but it's for you to find it by asking God to show you. Like I ask God, I say, God, show me what my calling is. Show me what my calling is. And I genuinely meant it when I prayed it. And two nights later, he he answered me by showing me the dream, you know, like, uh, sorry, Alex, I'm going to go a little extra on this one too. Like um, I was telling you someone who's a Seventh-day Adventist and a Seventh-day, well, he was studying theology and he, um, we were talking, we ended up meeting um, through, he was selling books, I think it was, and we exchanged numbers and whatever. And we would talk and we would talk about the scriptures and whatever. And he was trying to convert me in that sense, right? So Seventh-day Adventist, and he was asking me um, if, um, he was telling me that, um, you know, we should observe the Sabbath and all this, right? And I told him, I said, here what, I'm going to pray and ask God about this, and I will get back to you, right? And I prayed that day, that was the morning, I prayed the morning, and I said, God, show me if what he is saying is right, right? And I went about my day, I prayed normal and went about my day, and the next morning, um, I got up and I, what I would do sometimes, I would say, God, show me what you want me to know. You know, like in Jesus' name, or I said, God, show me what you want me to know. And I would just open the Bible and I would open the Bible. So anyway, so I did that that day. And what happened is that the, like the Bible opened to Colossians chapter two. 
right? So I started to read Colossians chapter 2. Sorry for hearing noise. <laughs> no, you're fine. Right, so Colossians chapter 2. And I read, I read the chapter. And I reached to, to verse 16. And it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Right? So, I, I called him, I called him like right away. I was like, what? I was like, remember I told you that I'm going to pray and ask God? I said, God answered me. He's like, what? I was like, read Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. I think I told him. So he read it. He was like, oh, no. No, no, no. Um, it's talking about other Sabbath days. The Sabbath day is a different Sabbath day. I was like, what? Why? I mean, God would be, God wouldn't um, try to, to tie us up. You understand what I'm saying? I believe that God is straightforward. He's talking about the Sabbath days. You understand? Don't let any man judge you according to it. You know? Because, um, and then he was talking about eating pork and all these things. I mean, if you look at the health benefits, I mean, health, the health, um, gosh, uh, well, it's problem something concerning um, uh, eating pork. I could understand, right? Eating pig and huh, well, I could understand, but when it reached to you saying, "Oh, don't eat it because you are unclean," or you are, you know, that kind of thing. I, I, I don't. Um, I, I believe that. You can't, I, I don't just, like if I'm going to church, I don't just take things just like that. A pastor is telling me, so, 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 so. I want to see it in the word. I want to see it. This is, this, we, we in the New Testament times. I want to see it in the word, right? And if you're telling me something and it is not in the word, you know what I mean? I mean, of course, th those are the, the laws from before. I believe the Seventh-day Adventists were following the laws. But we now, too, we need to seek God. We can't just, I don't just sit down and think, okay, my pastor would lead me. And I would not read the word. You have to have a relationship with God. You can't just be sitting and thinking, okay, your pastor is covering. And your pastor would, yeah, the, uh, pastors can lead you astray, too. If, well, I mean, who is not, if someone is not of God, right? But you need, they have their relationship with God and you have to have a relationship with God. You can't depend on their relationship for things with God, for things to run how you want it to run. If you understand what I'm saying, you have to have your own relationship with God. He needs to know you. And if he does not know you, you understand? You don't want to be that person that he says, depart from me for I know you not. How incredible all these different testimonies. And I know that you're going to, um, like I said, comfort a lot of people through this. So I can't thank you enough for, for taking the time to join us and share, share your encounters and testimonies. Mm -hmm. It was a pleasure. Well, that is it for the show this week, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Something a little bit different this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, part of the show is just to remind people that the supernatural is real or to inform them, rather, that the supernatural is real and that it all leads back to one truth, which is found in Jesus. And so um, I'm so grateful that we have had a chance to have so many different miraculous testimonies that we've shared uh, throughout the course of a little bit over the last year, and which are usually take more of the form of like a kind of a narrative format. But I thought it was a nice change of pace today just to have some experiences kind of just scattered throughout uh, the episode and, and uh, just to kind of get a little taste of, of that side of things as well. And um, just, to, just to kind of serve as a reminder that this stuff is still going on um, and eventually like I said it all does lead back to one truth um, and so this is for you as well whoever's listening that has maybe similar experiences as the ones that Tina shared today I'd love to hear from you as well and uh, would love to, to feature your experiences on the show if you want to go ahead and send me either a video or uh, just a short write-up to the email listed below in the description wherever you're listening to this and uh, we can Go ahead and try to set something up. And as you saw today, if you don't want to be on camera, we do have an audio-only version available as well for recording. Um, I just want to uh, remind you as well to please uh, share this with one person if you found it to be of any benefit or if you found it to be hopefully informative and entertaining, you know, hopefully that combination. 
And uh, just want to say thank you again, as always, for supporting the podcast, wherever it is you're doing it, whether that's on YouTube or podcast apps and, and for subscribing and for uh, joining us in our Facebook group as well, just Spirit Answers. We would love to have you over there. That is it for this week. I hope that you had a fantastic week. I'll be praying for you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.